In today's video, guys, I'm going to be melting down some scrap copper, and boy, do I have a lot of it. I'm just going to try to fit as much copper as I can into this little tiny crucible. I think it's a 4kg crucible. I'm not really sure. I kind of forget. I have quite a few of them. So let's bring this crucible out to my furnace and start melting this copper down. And it's going to take probably 15 or so minutes to get it molten. copper has already started to melt so I'm gonna add this large chunk to it. I cast this a while back in an open mold and it didn't turn out very good. You can see the big bubble on the back. I mean who wants a nice ingot that's not flat on its back? So I'm just gonna set it on top of the furnace to preheat it before actually putting it into the furnace because you don't want to put a cold ingot in molten copper. Bad things can happen. So I put together a few casting flasks and I didn't film it in this video, but fortunately I have another video where I made them before. So I included that clip right here. For today's video, instead of using dry sand for lost foam casting, I'm actually going to be using green sand as well as a casting flask to make this copper piece. If you're not familiar with green sand, green sand is just called green sand because it has water in it. It's not actually green. Green sand is created by having really fine sand and bentonite clay powder added to that sand and then adding a little bit of water to it until the sand is able to hold its shape without falling apart. So I'm not going to be doing a voiceover for the entire video. If you have any questions on what I'm doing, don't hesitate to ask it in the comments. All right guys, that is the video clip from another video that I made the same thing I'm making today. So you always wanna preheat your molds before you pour the molten metal into it. And I thought I did a pretty good job. But if you saw the first five seconds of the video, which you probably did, it didn't go so well when the molten copper hit the cold metal. And that is why you need to wear your personal protective equipment.
After a little while, the copper has solidified. It's now time to open up the flags and see how they came out. Well, I think they came out pretty good. I think they would have came out a little better if it was in a horizontal flask rather than a vertical flask like I have here. All right, so now we're in the garage and now it is a day later and I'm going to be opening up the other flasks and see how those ones came out. And these ones are actually my channel coins or channel rounds, some call them. I don't think I've ever made them in copper. I have a bunch of these in aluminum, but I really don't think I have one made of copper. But now I have two. So after I finished removing these from the sand, cleaning off all of the green sand that's stuck to the copper, I'm gonna bring these over to the vise and cut off the sprues. Oh yeah, and let's not forget about these. I'll have to cut off the sprues from these as well. All right guys, let's see what we have here. We have two super cool New Jersey copper bars and two really cool Heinrichs made channel rounds. These copper bars really came out super nice. I mean, look at the shine on these. I'm actually excited to make more of these because I just love how the copper looks. Look at the shine. Copper is an incredible metal. It really is. And, oh yeah, we can't forget about my cool channel rounds, can we? The nice Heinrichs made YouTube channel rounds. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you liked the video, smash that like button and subscribe.